Welcome to Pure Mind Magic, the show to evolve your mind. Our mind is the most powerful thing we have, but no one teaches us how to use it. When we find out how, we're ready to create magic in life and in business. Learn real mindset secrets from brilliant minds around the world to change your mindset and income level forever. With every decision you make, you create your future. What is your next move? Now, welcome your host. Host, international magician, speaker, and podcast performance consultant, Jennifer S. Royal. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Pure Mind Magic and Interview Friday. Today on the show for you, I have a real leadership expert. His name is Rocky Romanella. He's the founder of 360 Management Services and an internationally thought after motivational keynote speaker. He's also the author of a book that deals with the principles of balanced leadership and looks back to over 40 years of experience as a CEO and director. He started his career at UPS and learned a lot about leadership. And today he will reveal a few secrets around that. And I will also ask him about business development strategies and how you can improve your resources about time and energy to be really productive. So you will listen to an interesting interview and learn a lot from best practice. So lean back, enjoy the show. And here is for you, Rocky Romanella. Hi, Rocky. Welcome to Pure Mind Magic. Well, Jennifer, it's a pleasure to be on the show and I look forward to speaking with you and your audience. I'm so great that you said yes to the show and to being my guest. And we will create a special episode today talking about leadership. And I can't wait for my audience to learn from your 40 years of experience as a CEO and director. So you really know a lot about leadership. You're also an author. We will talk about your book and some cool tricks that people can use to develop their mindset and become a better leader and more successful in business. Before I start with my long list of questions for you, Rocky, please introduce yourself to our audience. Well, thank you, Jen. It's uh, Rocky Romanella and um I live here in New Jersey now, but traveled uh, all throughout the, the U.S. on my many assignments. Uh, I spent 36 years at UPS. Uh, and then uh, once I retired from UPS, I w was a CEO of a telecom company and then uh, retired from there. So I guess, Jane, one of the things I have failed at is retirement. So uh, I'm, uh, this retirement thing isn't working out. So I enjoy keeping myself busy. And now I started my own company, 360 Management Services, where we have three legs of our stool we have um, leadership training, keynote speaking, and then some consulting. So uh, I try to keep myself busy, and I enjoy the opportunity to speak with with people around the world. And hopefully some of the things that we talk about will be very helpful for them as they start to grow their business and they start to look at things that they can do maybe differently. And maybe we can create today, Jen, a few ha aha moments for them and where you know maybe they can look at their business differently or, or maybe just take a step back and and think about the way they approach their people or their customers uh, in a little different way. So I look forward to that those conversations. That's awesome. And I'm sure we will create this aha moments, Rocky. And interestingly that you brought about the retirement because you come across with your energy and dynamic so young. So I was really wondering, you don't come across like you're ready for retirement. And I'm so glad you, you don't and share your wisdom with us here. So maybe my first question would be, you worked so long for UPS. What was your biggest takeaway concerning business there? Well, you know, it's interesting. When I started at UPS, I, I basically started unloading trailers. I was a part-timer working my way through college. And my dad told me two things that stuck with me throughout my career and, and in my life. And when I started the job there, he told me two things. He said, whatever they ask you to do, say yes and thank you. And then learn your job and learn some more. 
And I think that second one was so important because, as you can imagine, over a 40-year business career, things have really changed. I mean, when I started at UPS, as I said, I was part-time on loading trailers and then became a full-time employee. And I actually was a delivery driver from UPS. And think about it. When I was a driver in 1980, we were on paper. And now look today – you couldn't give a driver paper to use. They, they all have to, you know, the handhelds and the and the different devices and how we track packages. And so you think about how that evolution and it's just that simple example. And so learning your job and learning, you know, learn your job and learn some more was such an such a valuable valuable uh, lesson for my dad from my dad. And then the first lesson was whatever they ask you to do, say yes and thank you. And, and what I learned in that lesson was the fact that. I was grateful to work for a company like UPS. They had a promotion from within policy. But the th- biggest thing I learned as a leader was, as UPS was tapping me on the shoulder saying, hey, we have this new opportunity for you uh, in Chicago, for example, or we have this opportunity, we purchased Mailbox, et cetera. We, re- you know, we'd like you to run that acquisition for us. I may not have always felt like I was ready for those responsibilities or new assignments. But I heard my dad over my shoulder saying, whatever they ask you to do, say yes and thank you. But what I learned from a leadership perspective was there are going to be times when your people may not feel ready and you are going to have to believe in them until they're ready to believe in themselves. And so it, it may have been a lack of confidence or maybe a lack of skill or the uncertainty of moving your family to a different place to live. And it UPS believed in Rocky Romanello way ahead of Rocky Romanello believing in himself. And I think that's the leadership takeaway. You're going to have, there are many times where you're going to have to believe in your people until they're ready to believe in themselves. And so you help them through that confidence, you help them through that knowledge. And, and then you get that sort of break even point where the person's knowledge and experience kind of equals their confidence. And so, you know, they, you can give them a little bit more responsibility and a little more authority without overmanaging them. And then once they're really good, then you let them fly. No one wants to get overmanaged at that point. Then you then you become the cheerleader. Hey, Jennifer, great job. Keep up the good work. You're more working with them from a distance than you are managing them. And so that was a great lesson for me that, A, you have to believe in your people until they're ready to believe in themselves. And then that second part, learn your job and learn some more because business is always going to change. And how do you keep yourself current so that you can manage your business, but also those, those, those people who are going to be in your care, who are going to work for you, they're going to be changing. They're going to have different skill sets and you're going to have to stay current with, with their needs and wants and desires from an employee perspective. Very important lesson, Rocky. And there's this old book, The Magic of Believing. And I think there's a lot of truth to it still that, I mean, you have to believe in yourself, but also you have to believe in other people. And sometimes, like from the standpoint of a magician, see things in people they can't see themselves yet and motivate them to get there. Would you say this would be like the mindset of a good leader? Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, if you think about it, the essence of leadership is the ability to get people to do things that they may not ordinarily be able to do on their own or to get them to achieve results for the organization and for them personally, uh, maybe in a way they they may not have seen themselves do it themselves. And so I think that that's so important. And I think you've articulated that well, that, you know, it's like magic, right? It's, it's, you're, you're helping transform the vision. You're helping them to see things differently. And I think that that's, that's so important. And then by the way, you get to celebrate some successes, you know, it's people work hard, people work very hard and it's nice to be able to celebrate some successes. And, you know, in, in magic, the success is when the trick happens, right. And, and all of a sudden you do find that rabbit in the hat. Well, for people it's, wow, I, I, I did accomplish this. I feel good about it. And you recognizing it as their leader go, goes a long way. So I think that that's very, very important. So, from your standpoint, what would you say makes a great business leader? Well, for me, it's this concept of legacy. And so let me take a quick second and maybe kind of talk about that. For me, legacy is, did you leave things a little better than you found them? Are people better because of their time with you? Are your customers better because they did business with you? Are the share owner stakeholders better because you were running their their business or their organization? So for me, the, the mark of you know leadership or the traits of a of a very very good leader is this legacy. Do you leave things a little better than you found them? Are people better? 
are your customers better? Are your stakeholders better because of the time with you? And if you think about that from that perspective, then what you do stems from an honest heart. You do things because they're the right things to do. You get less caught up in recognition for yourself or less caught up in, you know, uh, the material things and more caught up in are things better because of me? And if they're not better because of me, then I'm, I'm really not doing a very good job as a leader. So I think that's, for me, this concept of legacy is really defines uh, g- excellent leadership. Very well answered. So, Rocky, it is said that when you are an entrepreneur, you can earn like around $100,000 a year. So you can reach that goal by hustling all the time and like about working day and night just for yourself, the youpreneur. And then it said when you reach this limit, you have to have a team to go up to like 500,000 or a million or whatever you have in mind. So you have to build this team and with that really become a leader and being able to communicate to other people, making them understand what you want or telling them your vision. So what would you say, how is it possible as an entrepreneur to make this transition from working for yourself, being self-employed, being a youpreneur to really being an entrepreneur and a leader in business to create huge success? Oh, absolutely. And I think that entrepreneurs start with something that I think is so valuable and it's such an intangible skill that they sometimes don't give themselves credit for. And that's that an entrepreneur is all in. An entrepreneur understands the value and the and the consequences of the decisions that they make. Sometimes when you start with a large organization, you have this large organization behind you. And your decisions, while important, though, sometimes can be, you know, have the insurance or, 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 or have the large organization behind you. But nobody understands being all in like an entrepreneur. And if you think about it for a second, you know, an entrepreneur at the end of the day, they hit the cash register and the drawer opens. They pay their people. They pay their vendor. And what's left in that cash register is what they take home for their family. And so that ability to be completely all in, to be committed so deeply is such a great skill that an entrepreneur understands and begins to process. Now, as they start to grow and develop, now they start to add some other skill sets they need. How do I delegate? How do I hold people accountable? How do I have difficult conversations with my employees? How do I give up? some of this. You know, if you think about it, one of the things I think that entrepreneurs struggle with is their strength becomes their weakness. If you think about an entrepreneur, all in, they're completely committed, nobody knows the business better than they do. What are some of the weaknesses of an entrepreneur? All in, nobody knows the business better than they do, you know, completely committed, right? Because their strength becomes their weakness. So as you start to grow as an entrepreneur, you have that great foundation of commitment. You have that great foundation of being all in. Great skill, hard to teach, hard to train. So you start with that. Now the question is, how do you grow and develop these other skills? How do I grow my business? How do I add that first employee and make sure that they feel valuable, make sure they feel like they're part of the solution, not part of the problem? How do I get them to, get, how do I get them to feel like they're an owner as well, even though I'm the owner? But how do I get them to feel like an owner? Because if you can manage as an owner – You make better decisions, you make more balanced decisions. So I think that's, but those are skills that can be taught. The ability to have this, you know, internal force that allows you to start a business, that that gives you the strength and energy to start your business. So I have great, great respect for entrepreneurs and small business owners because I, I have such great respect for their ability to start a business, to drive a business, to be so completely committed, to put their their families on the lines, for example, in terms of, you know, money and, and, and those kinds of things, the commitment. So I, I have great respect for them. And so I think as they, as that business grows to your question from a hundred thousand to 200, 300, 400,000, those are the skill sets that you can be trained on and you can learn. And as long as you're open to learn those things and you have that willingness to learn, I believe, I believe they can be taught and they can be learned. But the key is you start with this great, this great commitment and this great, you know, fire in your heart and that you're going to, you're going to make, you're going to grow your business. And that's just something that's tremendous. And it's probably your, your greatest strength as an entrepreneur. 
that was a fantastic description here, Rocky. And obviously, you have a ton of knowledge when it comes to leadership and business development. And I'm so glad that you became an author as well and created a book on the principles of balanced leadership. Can you tell us more about your book and where the listeners can get a copy? Well, thank you for asking. So the book, so many years ago, as I was growing and developing in, inside, you know, UPS and then later on, uh, you know, the company I was running, I recognized early on that that balance is so important in everything you do, right? And sometimes we get so focused on, you know, profitability maybe or so focused, you know, on growing our business or so focused on making this, the, the you know, the best place an employee can work. And while those are all good uh, things to aspire to, they're out of balance because you're just focused on profitability maybe. And so for me, I started to realize that all three constituents, customers, people, share owner, stakeholders, the profitability company have to be represented in all the decisions that you make. And I started to develop this concept of balanced leadership. And so all of the, in all the decisions that you make, I think you have to stay in balance. You know, am I thinking like a customer? Do my people feel like valued individuals? And do I act like an owner? in all the decisions that I make. And a quick example would be, you know, you would be sitting at a meeting and, you know, the marketing manager would, would come forth with a new product potentially. And, you know, and if you thought about it, the marketing people and the salespeople do a great job of articulating the product and you have, you know, salespeople are great with 50 or 60,000 pages of PowerPoint presentations, right? You got all these PowerPoint presentations, the product, the product placement, you know, why the customers would want it. And so, so that's, you know, so the customer's well represented in this example. And then of course the CFO, he or she may be sitting there pounding on the calculator saying, okay, at this price point, you know, with, with this margin, we can make really good money. But in that example, my next question would be, okay, in my mind, the customers are represented well, the share owner stakeholders are represented with a profitable you know, product, but how about our people? You know, who's going to train them? Do they understand the role they play in it? If we have a service disconnect, how do we handle that service disconnect? So uh, you want to make sure that all three constituents, customers, people, and the profitability share owner stakeholders are represented. So that's how this balanced leadership concept, you know, became such an important uh, idea for me because I wanted to make sure that, that all three constituents were represented. And then the f the final piece is, and then you want to wrap all that with good processes. So that's how you replicate good. So every customer experience is a good customer experience because you have processes in place that produce consistent results. And so for me, process kind of ties it all together. But this concept of thinking like a customer, feeling like a valued individual, and acting like an owner in all your decisions becomes so important. And if you think about it in a large corporation, when someone has an idea, oh, why don't we try this? Uh, we'd go through all the numbers and we'd go through – you know, the the presentation that I'd ask him at the end, hey, if this was your candy store, if you own this 100 percent and you were writing this check out of your checkbook, would you do it? And about 80 percent of the time, people would say, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But then you always have every now and then someone would say, well, no, not really. Well, Why would you present it to me? Well, you asked me to find new revenue streams. You asked me, can we find a new product? And so I, I, I was responding to the challenge you gave us. But I, but if this was my business. I don't think I do it. Well, that's when you start to think to yourself, well, if you're not committed to it, then certainly uh, there's no way I want to be committed to it. So I think that that, that kind of last question of if this was your candy store, would you do this really, really talks about the commitment, really talks about your desire to make this product or this, this new opportunity that we're talking about succeed. And so that's the balanced leadership concept. You think like a customer, you make sure your people and yourself feel like valued individuals, but you act like an owner in all your decisions. Hmm, a perfect description. So that makes so much sense. And now coming back to my question for everyone interested, what is the best way to get your book? Oh, sorry about that. See, I didn't even help myself. <laughs> I, I, I need to go to marketing school. What's wrong with me? Come on. <laughs> you are um, so, uh, really good at leadership. Yeah, but I just yeah, wanted to yeah. make sure that uh, people can grab a copy because I'm sure there is uh, so much amazing content in it and I don't want anyone to miss it out. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, so it's uh, online at Barnes and Noble, but uh, Amazon is great. Amazon does a great job for filling for me, so you can get it at Amazon. It's um, it's it's great. It's they do a great job with it. Uh, my website is www. It's the number three, and the word sixty 
Management Services, S-I-X-T-Y, managementservices.com. On that website as well, you can go through and order it there. Um, but uh, I also do a lot of uh, what I call lunch and learn. So uh, companies will buy the books for their employees or for their people, and then I'll dial in as the author, and we'll discuss for an hour a particular topic or a particular thought in the book. And I, I really enjoy that, and I think it's 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 very enjoyable for the people inside an organization as well. So that's been a that's been a fun thing for me to do. But Amazon is probably the best and quickest way to get the book. And of course, you know, internationally, it's it's uh, probably one of the easier ways to uh, to get product is through is through Amazon. So uh, uh, and, they, and they do their fulfillment for me. It's in paperback, it's in hard copy, copy, and it's also on a on a uh, e-reader version as well. So, but thank you very much for, uh, for asking for that. I hope you enjoy the book. I wrote the book. It's kind of a different read. I, I do not write it in a first person. Uh, I never liked saying I, or I think we should do this. And so when years ago, Jennifer, when, um, people would bring me an idea, I didn't, you know, I didn't like that feeling of saying, well, you know, Jennifer, that's a good idea, but, but what if, whenever you say, but people think, oh, I guess he doesn't really like it or wants to change it. So some years ago, I created this fictitious character named Joe Scaffone. And so I would say to you, Jennifer, that's a good idea. But you think Joe Scaffone thinks that's a good idea? And so that was my way of challenging you to maybe not stop at the first right answer. Because I think one of the things that prevents people from maybe moving from good to great in ideas or, or their development is this concept of they stop, they stop at the first right answer. Now, as you and I know, Jen, for first, it is the first one. It is the right answer because it's the first one. But if what if we can challenge you to move past that first right answer? What if we can challenge you to kind of look behind that first right answer? You may find an answer that's deeper or wider, or you may reinforce that this is the best answer. And so the way that I found the easiest for me as a leader to challenge people in a positive way, not to stop at the first right answer, was to say, hey, you think Joe Scaffone thinks it's a good idea? So that was my kind of way of doing it without making you feel, you know, that maybe, you know, critical or that I didn't didn't like your idea. Just challenging you to not stop at the first right answer. Funny thing is years later, as people worked with me for a long time, they would come to meetings and say to me, I already covered this with Joe. You know, Joe thinks this is a good idea. All right. OK, well, that's good. Let me look at it, too, then, if I could. So. So the book's written in this third person under the Joe Scaffone. So I think you'll enjoy it from that perspective. Each chapter has a story. I like to tell stories. And there's a kind of a lesson at the end of each one. So hopefully it becomes a really good book for you to uh, have two kinds of things as well as a good story to smile and, and hopefully create a few aha moments for you. That sounds really cool and it's a really nice approach and I'm sure that more people can relate to that. They don't like so much reading or writing always in I. So that's a really clever trick you used there and I think I should get this book as well for my library. And it's often said, Rocky, that really successful people do have a library or at least a lot of books and they read a lot. What is your opinion on that? I think it does a couple things for you. It, one is it reinforces. And see, I think when I read a book, and, and, and I think a lot of people in your audience will feel this way as well, a lot of times you'll put a book down and you feel like, well, I, I do those things. Well, that's a good thing. It reinforces that you you do do the good you do do good things. Sometimes you don't give yourself enough credit, and so I think that when you put down a good book, you're going to find out that there's a lot of good things you do in that book. Maybe it's a different style or different approach, but you do a lot of good things. And then there's some things that you have that aha moment. Well, you know what? I could look at it differently. You know, I tilt your head a little bit. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I should look at it differently. Maybe I should do it a little differently. But so that's a, so you you kind of put the book down what maybe or 60, 70 percent of it saying, yeah, I do those things. I'm, you know, you know, but you know what? I'm pretty good. That, that's nothing wrong with that, Jennifer. But then I think there's those one or two, three aha moments where you start to think to yourself, I may have to look at things differently. I may have to address them differently. Uh, and so I think that's important. So that's the learning moment, you know, that, that comes out of that, 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 you know what, there's a different, maybe a different approach or a different way for me to do it. Or maybe, you know, maybe my style, although, you know, helpful in many situations may be hurtful in this one particular situation. So that's why I think for me, the reading is really good reinforcement. And then it gives me those kind of, ah, you know what, maybe I can look at this differently. You're, we're always going to learn, right? So we're always learning out there. And it, as long as you're open to learning, you learn it from a lot of different places and from a lot of different people. It's not always from a mentor or mentee, mentee situation. 
I will tell you some of the some of my b- best lessons I've learned from my wife Debbie. Uh, great friend, great partner. Uh, we've been together. I think we're going on 37 years, and and I great, just fantastic. But I've learned so much from her. And you would think, wow, after all these years, you know, it's got to be some great book or no, it's, it's, it's from the people you live with, the people around you, your friends, the people in your neighborhood, as well as the people at work and people that mentor you. But you, th- there's learning all around you if you're open to it. Yes, that's true. So there are a lot of channels from where you can learn from. I just saw a very cool picture on your website where there is you in front of a, a big bookshelf and even with a book in your hand. And I thought, yeah, that that looks really good. And I still believe that there is a lot of knowledge in books. And as you mentioned, also uh, knowledge that comes from real life experiences that are happening around you. So I have a special question for you, Rocky. You mentioned in the beginning about UPS, obviously that they moved from paper to having everything digital. And also when we look at entrepreneurship, nowadays it's really easy for everyone to turn entrepreneur online. So there is this world with endless possibilities. And it's the same that when you want to achieve something big there that you need a team. So you can't do everything yourself because your time and energy is somewhere limited. And when we look into doing everything virtually, like working with virtual assistants, graphic designers, uh, branding experts, whatever you need, what can you say? How is it possible to become a good leader online and work with a virtual team, but still be good in leadership? Well, I think, I think there's, I would say there's, you know, quickly probably four traits that I think are important in terms of uh, leadership and, and your skills as a leader. And the first one is being, you have to be a great communicator. You have to work at communication. And what I mean by great, I don't mean, you know, you're a great orator or you're just, you know, ph- phenomenal as a public speaker. What I mean by great is you work hard at communication. Now, w- when you have dis- distributed employees or remote employees, you have to work at that. I mean, you have to be, you have to go out of your way to make sure you make contact with them, to make them feel like they're part of something, not overmanage them, but also make them feel like they're part of the team, they're part of the family, what they do matters, Uh, the simple things like, hello, good morning, that you would easily say in an office setting or in a, you know, in a production manufacturing setting, because I'm going to see you on a daily basis. You, you you can't lose sight of the fact that those, those individuals want to make, want to stay connected. So I think your communication skills have to have to have to be good strong you have to work at them but communication is so important people want to hear from the person that they're working for the reporting to or the or I say as the leader the people in your care you know I don't believe people are your employees I think they're in your care and so I think that that's important I think you have to be the type of person that you, you takes seriously and owns skills development how do I help you develop yourself? You know, I think companies should aspire to have and entrepreneurs should aspire to have the best, the brightest, the most informed, the best educated people in the industry. And if you think about it, it's more important to an entrepreneur because if you're going to hire one person and that one person is not a good employee or not an effective employee, you're a hundred percent failure rate. If you're in a company with 10,000 people and a thousand are struggling, you know what? The percentage is a lot smaller, right? So I think that it's so important as an, as an entrepreneur in a small business, you know, you, you need good people, but they, many good people start with good intentions, but it's up to you as the leader to be a job skills developer, to help them develop themselves, help them gain that knowledge to be the best, the brightest, the most informed and best educated people in the industry. So they should aspire to that and you should, you know, inspire them to want those things. I think you always have to be customer service focused, whether it's internal or external customers. I think that, you know, the person who comes inside your store is an obvious customer, but the person, the people that you work with inside your organization, it's you and that one employee, 
that's your internal customers. How do you deal with each other? Do you treat each other with dignity and respect? Do you, do you respond to emails? Do you respond to questions that they have in a timely fashion? So I think that you always have to be customer focused and that's both the internal and external customers. And the last one for me is always, you have to be, you have to own accountability. You have to hold yourself accountable as well as your people, but it starts with you. Do I, do I walk the talk? Do I do the things I say I'm going to do? You know, do do I represent the brand? You know, do I represent the brand promise? Am, am I that role model for my for my people as well as the customers look at me as well? Wow, Rocky lives and breathes, you know, the brand promise. And so I think that's important. So for me, those four, I think critical skills are so important. Good communication, developing your people, you know, being customer focused and then you know, holding yourself and your people accountable, I think are so important. And I think as an entrepreneur, as you're starting to grow, I, I think, you know, these are skills you have to work on. And I think as, to, to your question, as you have distributed employees or employees who are not potentially working with you on a daily basis, I think you have to just be conscious that you have to work on these and you have to be, you know, these are deliberate things you have to do to make sure you are communicating properly, that that they're still getting the training they need so that they can develop themselves and help help them get to that next point in, in their evolution and in whatever role they play for you. You know, that that you're showing them how to treat the, the external customer by the way you treat them as the internal customer. And finally, you know, do you hold yourself as accountable to your your personal accountability as you would them? As, as someone in your organization, so. Very good answer to my question and very good structured. Rocky, you are the founder of 360 Management Services. What offers your company? Well, you know, I, this concept, as we talked about before on this legacy. So for me, when I started 360, it was about this concept of legacy. So I was fortunate to have a wonderful career, met some great people and had some opportunities along the way, whether, you know, in some of the many acquisitions we did at UPS, I was involved in the integration. It was it was building cultures. It, it was, you know, doing some non-traditional things, you know, besides the traditional things that, you know, UPS does. And by the way, UPS, uh, our first country outside of the uh, United States was was uh, Canada and Germany. Mm, nice. So Germany, yes, yes. We've been in Germany, I think, since 1976. So, uh, but uh, so for me, I had those opportunities. And so 360 gave me a chance to continue this concept of legacy. Do you leave things a little bit better? And I wanted a way to potentially help people through my experiences Now, the book was part of it, but we have a, a leadership training. We do, uh, uh, we build workshops um, for companies. We also, around the world, we also, you know, have, you know, kind of uh, standard workshops that we'll do for onboarding in new, new people, for, uh, you know, supervisor training. And then we build workshops for things like why values matter in business, how to have difficult conversations. And so the, uh, the leadership, the training and the training was, was, I thought was such a good way to potentially keep that legacy going. Uh, keynote speaking, I, I absolutely enjoy the keynote speaking side. I, you know, I enjoy doing conferences, but I also do breakout sessions and conferences. And and the and the conferences give me a chance to talk a little bit about these concepts that you and I are talking about. Uh, talk a little bit about the book and some of the concepts in the book, but also get I I get such great learning myself from it. Right, it keeps me so current keeps me with the opportunity to talk with just amazing people around the world. So I enjoy the keynote from that perspective. And then finally, we have a, a we have a consulting part of the business. And all of us kind of grew up that, that are, you know, the, the folks that do the consulting inside the organization with me. We all grew up at UPS. And as you know, UPS is a, is a, is a wonderful company from a process perspective. And so everything we do from a consulting side centers around process You know, you identify a problem, you understand what the what the solutions are, but then how do you put that process in place that replicates good? Because you don't want to keep coming back and having to fix the same pro problem over again. So we're really kind of a process improvement group in the sense of we we identify the you identify the problem, you come up with the solution, but then how do you wrap it in a process that allows you to gain consistent results over a long period of time? So. For me, the, the 360 management services was an opportunity to kind of continue that legacy concept of taking all this experience and, and the experience. Most of the, the individuals inside 360 have at least 30 years of, um, of management experience or working experience. So it gives us a chance to give back 
from all the learning and all the opportunities and some of the experiences that we had along the way and feel good about the fact that we're helping. Great. So what would you say, what is your, what does your ideal customer look like? It's actually a, a small to medium sized customer. Uh, we do, you know, uh, we, we enjoy working with the startup customer. We, enjoy, we absolutely love that customer. That's at that moment where I think you asked a question before, okay, got my business. It's doing really well. I'm at that hundred thousand mark getting from 100 to 500,000 and then 500,000 to a million are huge st stepping stones. Because when you're at that hundred thousand, you might be in that zone where things are really going well for you. Think about a, an athlete who's in that zone where, you know, if they're playing soccer, they're just in a great place. Everything they do is working really well. Well, well maybe when they get to that next level team or they get to a bigger stadium or, or a bigger audience as a magi magician, for example, well, you have to change your approach potentially. It's a bigger audience. It's a, it's a bigger crowd. And so every time you take that next step up, there's skills that you have to learn, but there's also, a transition that has to happen. And the other thing that's difficult is, especially from a small business owner, you've added capacity. And so, you know, when you're at 80% capacity, you're probably in that sweet spot. But if I just added another piece of equipment or another building, if I'm doing logistics and supply chain, I could be running that building under capacity for a while. And so that could be difficult for me to make money. And so you have to prepare yourself for those things. So we enjoy working with that small a uh, medium customer that's on the cusp of taking that next giant step. And because we have different skill sets and we have process, a uh, process mind, we can really help them out a lot. So uh, we do business with some larger customers. Uh, in fact, I do some workshops and, and do some training with Prudential and companies like that, that are, that are more familiar names to uh, worldwide names. But I will say that uh, we absolutely enjoy that small business owner. That sounds really interesting, and I think as well to a lot of people in the audience right now. Rocky, you mentioned also that you do conferences, you do uh, keynote speaking and even breakout sessions. So in case someone is interested, how is the process working to invite you as a motivational speaker? Oh, thank you. Uh, so uh, the best, there's two ways to get me that's probably the quickest, easiest, fastest. Uh, certainly you can always email me at Rocky, R-O-C-K-Y, Romanella, R-O-M-A-N-E-L-L-A -L -L -A, at gmail.com. Always can always email me. And then on our website, uh, as I said before, www, the number three and the word 60, S-I-X-T-Y, managementservices.com. There's a uh, there's a contact tab in there that you can see some of my I have a podcast page which your podcast I can't wait to uh, load up your podcast as well and uh, but I have, I have YouTube videos that are there for people to see me speaking uh, as well as you can book me through there you can at least begin that conversation there and so um, I, I absolutely enjoy I, I love being able to build a talk for the specific audience. When I used to go to conferences, I would hate when someone, you know, a speaker roll in with a whaley bag, do their hour conference and leave, do their hour talk and leave. For me, I enjoy getting there, spending time with the audience, getting to know what keeps them up awake at night. And then and then taking a good talk and tailoring it more around what that audience needs. Because if you think about it as an audience, you're taking away from your business potentially. You're taking you're away from your family. You really want to walk away from a conference being entertained. And, 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 and walking away with some information, some education, because you are making a sacrifice. You're, you're away from your business, but more importantly, you're away from your family. And so for me, I always want to be able to entertain you, but also give you some, some knowledge, some information, some education, and, and hopefully create that aha moment for you. So you can reach me probably my, uh, G Gmail account, Rocky Romanella Gmail or the website, 360 management services.com. Love to hear from you. Thanks for sharing your email address. And I will put this also in the show notes below this episode that people can reach you there and connect with you and invite you to the next convention to have you as a speaker on stage. Rocky, it was such a pleasure to have you on Pure Mind Magic today. And I myself learned a lot about leadership and how to approach it. And very interesting what you said about balance and uh, how to build your team and help to keep your 
team accountable. So that was really fantastic. And I would love to leave the last words of this episode up to you so you can share whatever you like. It's just about to leave our audience in a motivational, uplifting state for the day with a good mindset. So anything, a book recommendation or what you learn from a mentor or from your wife, Debbie, or whatever comes to your mind first, the stage is yours. Well, thank you very much. Well, let me give you my Debbie Romanello story that to me was that uh, sort of uh, aha moment for me. So we go out to dinner one night. We, we had met this couple. We go out to dinner one night and the woman says to Debbie, we have four four beautiful children, four grandchildren, the fifth one on the way. And so, uh, so the woman says to Debbie, hey, who's your favorite kid? So Debbie looks at her and says, I, I don't have favorites. All four of them are my favorites. And so, but I kind of take that kind of lean back and say, I want to hear how she handles that. Cause I've never heard anybody ask her that. Like, who's your favorite kid? You know? <laughs> so, um, Debbie says, no, 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 they're all my favorites. She goes, no, oh, come on. It, it's gotta be one of them. I mean, is it Jean Marie? Is it Nicole, Rocky, Andrew? She goes, no, no, they're all my favorites. So the woman says, well, how could that be? And so her answer to me, I'll tell you now was brilliant, thoughtful. And it, it, it really, I changed how I managed from this moment forward. She says to them, They're all my favorite because each of them gets what they need when they need it. Now think about that for a second. Each of them gets what they need when they need it. So so by that, they all feel like they're the favorite because whenever they need something, they get what they need. And so I thought about that and, you know, I thought about how thoughtful that was and, and insightful. And then from that moment forward, I managed all my organizations, small, large, With that same thought in mind. So, for example, if I had a controller or a CFO who was seasoned, what they needed from me wasn't to overmanage them. They had the skills. They had the knowledge. They had the experience. What they needed was for me to leave them alone. Go do what I'm here if you need me. Go do your job. You got it. They wanted that support. But if I had a brand new sales manager, for example, what they needed was more of my time. And so for me, I started to manage with this concept of, Everybody gets what they need when they need it. And so I thought that was brilliant. That to me was so thoughtful. And from that moment forward, it's how I manage. And as an entrepreneur, as you start to hire people and you add one, two, three people, each person in your organization, each of them is going to need something different. And each of them will need you to be able to understand what it is you know, what they need when they need it and how do you provide that for them? So that's, that was one. And the last thing I'd like to say, and not to take up too much more of, of your time or your audience's time, I know time is so precious, is one of the things I always tell people, whether it's a person starting out in the business world for the first time or a business person who's just starting a company or a seasoned business individual with 35 years who's who's at that point now and, and they're wondering, are there other things that I can do or learn in the kind of twilight of my career? I always say to them, each of us needs to sit down and in the conscience of your own heart and mind, ask, ask yourself and answer three questions. The first question is, who am I? What do I stand for? And what won't I compromise? And if you think about that, companies need to do that, but people need to do that. So if you're starting out in the world or you're starting a company, well, who am I? Who is our company? What do we stand for? But number three, Jennifer, is the most important. What won't we compromise? And if you think about companies that have gotten themselves in trouble or people who've gotten themselves in trouble over the course of time, I'm sure they could have answered one and two. Who are we? What do we stand for? Right. Companies have these great mission value statements. They've got it posted all over the place. This is what we stand for. But companies who get themselves in trouble and people who get themselves in trouble is because they have never really sat and answered number three. What won't I compromise? And so I think that going forward, as you're regardless of where you are in your life and your career, starting out, think about that. Who am I? I mean, you know, I start my business career. What do I stand for? What won't I compromise? You're a senior person. You're thinking, hey, have I done, what have I done? How do I end my career? What are the things that are going to define me when people look back and they say, Rocky Romanella, you know, who was he? What did he? Yeah, I tell you what he wouldn't compromise, safety, integrity, whatever those things are. And so I think that that's so important to make sure that you can clearly answer those three questions and be true to yourself and be true to those three questions because you will get tested on number three. 
won't, won't you compromise? So, so those are just some thoughts, Jen. I, I absolutely uh, appreciated uh, the opportunity today to, today to speak with you and your audience. You were absolutely the top, the best podcast interviewer I've ever had. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed today's interview and learned a lot about leadership and business development from my guest, Rocky Romanella. Make sure to grab a copy of his book to learn even more. And in case you are thinking of doing a convention or you have something in mind where Rocky could be a good fit, then please reach out to him and invite him. I'm sure he will bring an amazing energy to your event. Next Wednesday, I have the next midweek motivation prepared for you and we will talk about the film Limitless that I saw recently and it fits perfectly with the topic of this podcast about pure mind magic, looking into what would happen if we were able to use more of our mind. It is said that we use about 20% of it. And in this film, it all deals about what would happen when we could reach 100%. So I have a lot of interesting takeaways for you from this film. We'll talk a little bit about it. And if you haven't seen it, make sure you watch the movie, maybe this weekend. So Limitless is the name of the movie. It's a couple of years old already, but a really great film. I hope you do have a magical weekend and talk to you next week. Until then, create some magic. <laughs>